Welcome everyone to the episode 2 of The Healing Wisdom, Exploring Traditional Chinese Medicine. I'm Josh, Dr. Peter's Executive Assistant, and I'm with Dr. Peter Karen. So how's it going, Dr. Karen? It's going well. I'm glad to be here. Good to talk to you again. Amazing. I'm glad to talk to you again, Dr. Karen. So in this episode, we aim to provide clarity and insight into traditional Chinese medicine. Let's get started. To begin, Dr. Karen, can you explain what traditional Chinese medicine is and how it differs from Western medicine? Sure. Traditional Chinese medicine is focused on getting a person to be able to heal themselves removing things that get in the way, removing things that keep us from being our best self, or adding things in that we're lacking. Western medicine is generally focused on the treatment of disease. We're generally focused on the treatment of the person. We mm -hmm. see the idea for us is that if a person has the right resources, if they sleep well, if they eat well, if they digest well, if their mind is calm, then many diseases resolve themselves especially in a contemporary world where so many diseases have to do with things like mental health, which Western medicine often struggles to work with. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's so insightful. So next is, can you explain the importance of Tang and pulse diagnosis in traditional Chinese medicine and what information do they provide? Sure. So we gather information in a bunch of different ways to help understand what's going on with our patients. The goal is to gather a cluster of information that gives us what we call a pattern diagnosis, which is a way of thinking about what's going on with the person as a whole. We see that reflected in both the tongue and in the pulse. So when we look at the tongue, what we're looking at are whether or not the person has pathogens present, whether they're lacking something, how their fluid metabolism is working, how their digestion is working. It doesn't tell us everything, but it gives us a few pieces. The pulse works the same way. We can look at different parts of the body through the pulse. We can look at different organs through the pulse. On its own, it doesn't tell us everything. But once we combine the tongue with the pulse with some questions, we're able to come to a pattern. And then what we do is we treat the pattern. Wow, amazing. That's totally interesting. And also, can you explain to me the concept of yin and yang? We have already talked about this last week, but let's dig deeper regarding with the yin and yang in traditional Chinese medicine and how it applies to health and balance. Sure. So I mentioned in the beginning of this conversation that a big part of our goal is to help people return to a state in which they can heal themselves. And we see a lot of that as being about the relationship between yin and yang in each of us. The most simple way to understand yin and yang is that yin is storage and yang is activity. So if yin is the gasoline in the gas tank of your car, yang is the movement of the car forward. Mm. The movement expends gasoline, but the movement's also necessary to acquire more gasoline. That makes sense? Yes. So if a car sits in a garage and doesn't do anything, the gas tank can stay full. But what's the point of a full gas tank if you don't drive? And if you drive the car all the time and you never refill the gas tank, eventually you won't be able to keep moving. Your car will run out of gas. And so when we look at people, we look at the relationship between how many resources they're able to store and how they're able to use those resources. And the simplest version of this is whether someone can sleep well, which we see as a yin activity that aids in storage, and whether they're able to get up and move, whether they're able to be active, which is the yang version. So if I'm working with someone, for example, who's depressed and doesn't want to get out of the house and doesn't want to move a lot, I might try to strengthen their yang to get them more active and more moving. Instead of taking an approach of saying, we need you to exercise for an hour every day, what I try to do is use acupuncture and herbs to make the person naturally want to exercise mm -hmm. for an hour a day so that it doesn't take willpower and instead comes naturally. Wow. Thank you for explaining it in a way that I can totally understand, especially with the metaphor like exercising and also gasoline and the storage. Thank you. It's clear. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So with New Yorkers, so often, you know, New York is often called the city that doesn't sleep. And so yes. I see a lot of patients who work very hard in their careers, who work 60 hours a week. Wow. And then they're confused as to why they're starting to have physical issues. And so often what I do with them is help them to sleep, help them to make their sleep more efficient so that they can do a better job of supporting their yin 
so that they can have more young. Yes, that totally makes sense. And I'm really glad that you're really helping out all of these patients to be treated and also to help them to be the best versions of themselves. So you're totally amazing, Dr. Karen. And Thanks, Josh. you're welcome. And also, can you discuss the concept of wind cold and wind heat in traditional Chinese medicine and how it relates to various illnesses? Sure. So Chinese medicine has three broad categories of illness. External illness, which would be catching a cold, catching a flu. It would be COVID. It's things that come from outside. And then we have internal disease, which are more things like depression or anxiety or insomnia, which doesn't involve the outside world that's generated internally. Mm -hmm. And then we have other causes of disease, which are things like getting hit by a car, um, which don't have much of a cause. A lot of them are just bad luck. <laughs> when we're talking about wind cold and wind heat, these okay. are two different ways that we talk about the ways in which people get sick in a day-to-day -day sort of a way. The wind colds, tend to, both of these look like the common cold, they can kind of look like the flu. But wind colds tend to start with tension in the neck and a sense of compression in the head. And wind heats tend to start with scratch in the throat. Mm -hmm. Both of these have a different expected progression of the disease. Some people will talk about wind cold as more bacterial and wind heat more as viral. But I found that that isn't always the most accurate way to think about it. Um, different people Everyone knows what it looks like when they catch a cold. You know, oh, I know a cold is coming on because my nose is stuffy. I know yes. a cold is coming on because, you know, whatever it is that it happens for you. And so what we try to do is use herbs and acupuncture to treat the disease once it shows up, but also to help build up the person's defenses so it doesn't happen in the future. And opposed to simply improving the immune system, we would look at someone who always gets a scratchy throat and we would focus on the throat. As opposed to someone else who always gets sinus issues where we would focus on the sinuses. Yes, thank you. So now it also totally makes sense to me regarding with the difference of wind cold and wind hit. And the last question that I have for today is, how does traditional Chinese medicine view and treat chronic conditions or complex diseases? So we often start with simple diseases like a wind cold or a wind heat. Mm -hmm. But everyone here has had the experience of getting sick and then afterwards your digestion isn't quite right for a while. Or you get sick and then you have trouble sleeping for a bit or your energy doesn't come back for a long time. We see those diseases having penetrated deeper into the body and affected our natural rhythms. Once those natural rhythms are disrupted, then we can slowly acquire chronic diseases. So for example, if someone um, catches a cold, catches a wind cold, and they cough a lot, and they end up with a lot of constraint and tension in their chest, they may fight off the disease. The disease may be gone, but they may have set up their chest to stay tight. So for example, if I cough a lot, I might end up sitting in a position like this with my shoulders rounded afterwards, where my chest becomes compressed. If I don't undo that, then over time that will lead to other health problems, including things like anxiety, in which chest tension is often a symptom. And so we see these diseases as slowly creating chronic conditions, and then our job is to unwind that process, to undo the damage that's been done, and then very often the disease resolves on its own. Okay, I now get it. Thank you, Dr. Karn. And I also totally knew that our listeners will also get a lot of insights with these conversations that we have. So again, thank you so much for shedding light on traditional Chinese medicine. And it's been a fantastic chat. And we've just started scratching the surface of this intriguing field. So again, to our listeners, we hope that you've enjoyed this deep dive into traditional Chinese medicine course principles. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes of The Healing Wisdom, exploring traditional Chinese medicine as we explore this fascinating world further. So don't hesitate to share your thoughts and questions with us. Until next time, take care and be well.